Terry Garr and Michael Keaton star in the comedy that'll chase away the blues, warm your heart, and give you new hope for the future. I'm your babysitter. Shop around if you want to, but you won't find a funnier bargain than Mr. Mom. Tuesday on HBO. program is recommended by the National Education Association. Remember when things were different then? But then all things change, somehow rearrange. That's why while we can, we should remember when. Remember When, a fond remembrance of the people and events that have combined to become the story of America. This episode, The Image Makers, a look at advertising and its effect on American life. Your host for Remember When, Dick Cavett. Step right up, friends. Step right up and avail yourselves of the most amazing medical discovery of the ages. Dr. D. Cavett's amazing medical elixir. An angel of mercy in a bottle. It's guaranteed, yes, guaranteed, to cure scrofula, erysipelas, bald head, leprous, scurvy, pimples, ulcers, canker sores, baldness, and the pip, and is a specific against the Quincy. Only 50 cents a bottle and your money back if it doesn't do just as I say. There was only one problem with getting your money back. Dr. D. Cavett and his wagon full of magic might not pass this way again for some time, and with good reason. A little alcohol mixed with some tinted water couldn't cure anything but maybe the blues. And truth in advertising was still 150 years away, and the standard of the day was simply let the buyer beware, or in this case, perhaps Cavett mTOR. But, uh, Advertising didn't get off to a very responsible beginning, and while there are some who would say that it hasn't changed that much, it has, in fact, undergone an amazing transition. And by looking at these changes and by reviewing 200 years of American commercialism, we can almost trace the social, economic, and moral development of an entire nation. You know what this is. If you're just a casual observer, you might call it a circus. If you're an excited kid, you might call it terrific. If you're a reviewer, you might call it spectacular or even boring. But if you were the greatest advertising genius the world has ever seen, you just knew there was only one name for a spectacle like this. The greatest show on earth. His name was Phineas Taylor Barnum. 
the great P.T. Barnum, who supposedly left as a legacy for future generations of advertising people those immortal words of wisdom, there's a sucker born every minute. Barnum was also one of the first to use photography in his advertising, and he specialized in big blow-ups. But just as important, Barnum also taught the industry that if you want to sell something, you can't call it good or better or even best. It had to be the greatest. And don't forget the exclamation point. It's a lesson that would live for at least a century. Oh, I'm so great! Oh, I'm so great! Oh, I'm so great! Oh, to P.T. Barnum, animals in his circus, like these, weren't merely lions. They were the most fierce and fearsome examples of wild beast ever born of fang and claw. And, of course, it took the bravest and boldest men on the face of the earth, men of death-defying raw courage, to enter the ring with these untamed denizens of the jungle. Men who didn't know the meaning of the word fear. I hope they find one. Barnum may have been the best ad man, but he was far from the first. Even old P.T. never staged anything as spectacular as the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 A.D. And the lava that poured down on the town of Pompeii preserved some messages carved on the city's walls that are among the earliest examples of advertising ever discovered. Modern scientists who carefully dug up the remains painstakingly deciphered the wording and found some of the messages to be less than earth-shaking. Travelers, one of them read, going from here to the twelfth tower, their Serenus keeps a tavern. This is to request you enter. After 19 centuries, it's a little late to ask, what has Serenus done for you lately? Holiday Inn. Welcome to our people, please, and Hi. But it's That's remarkable how the appeal for customers has remained basically unchanged. By United Industries. We offer you a choice of the most popular locations. Advertising came to America with the Pilgrims, but the days of bold graphics and ballyhoo would have to wait for improvements in the printing press and the innovations of men like Barnum. The earliest ads were generally just simple announcements of goods to be bought and sold, like people and other property. You could always pick up a likely active Negro, for example. Or offer $10 for the return of a runaway apprentice. One of the boys being sought in this ad, a 16-year-old described as very fleshy with a freckled face, would spend most of his life being pursued. A few years later, when he became the 17th president of the United States, Andrew Johnson would be impeached and escape being dismissed from office by only one vote. Now listen, my children, and you shall hear of the wonderful teeth made by Paul Revere. Seven years before his immortal midnight ride, Paul Revere was advertising in the Boston Gazette that he could make you a set of false teeth that look as well as the natural. Then, as now, Matters of health and well-being were a major concern for advertisers. The accuracy of their claims was a minor concern. Tobacco was hailed as a panacea, a universal medicine with wonderful virtues. And coffee seemed to be the post-Renaissance penicillin. One advertisement in 1657 claimed that coffee could cure dropsy, the gout, and scurvy, and prevent miscarryings in childbearing women. It was also said to be a remedy against cough of the lungs and winds from the stomach. And these are just a few of the things that Mrs. Olson never told Joe DiMaggio or Juan Valdez. But the real boom in health and huckstering came in the years following the Civil War. There were virtually no laws to prevent advertisers from making even the most outlandish claims. And inspired by P.T. Barnum, American newspapers became the greatest medicine show on earth. Good taste was hardly a consideration. 
and neither was common sense. Lydia Pinkham modestly called her vegetable compound the greatest medical discovery since the dawn of history.